Welcome my friends. In this video, I'm going to be going through the learning demo for Google Sheets Lab 2 related to graphical displays and regression. As is always the case, if you'd like to follow along with this Google Sheets file, you can access the file in the link in the description of this video. And then once you've opened the file, you can go to File, uh, make a copy, and then you can title this uh, whatever you'd like to. So maybe uh, I could just change this to my, uh, my first and last name here. Uh, Luke Ellison, Google Sheets, Lab 2, and then we can uh, go ahead and make a copy. So the data set that I have here is a data set from Kaggle.com, which is a, uh, a website that allows you to access uh, you know, a whole bunch of different uh, data sets. And this is an open source free data set that I was able to access uh, that has uh, information related to the salary of a whole bunch of different individuals from different countries. And so the first column is the age of the person, then we have the gender, we have the education level, which is a zero for a high school education, one for a bachelor's degree, two for a master's degree, and then we have uh, threes for a uh, PhD. We have the job title, the years of experience, uh, the salary, the country, and the race of the individual. Now, the first thing you might notice is that the, uh, the education level, it's not very descriptive here, and uh, if it wasn't explained to you, it wouldn't be that clear what uh, all these numbers mean. So maybe you would like to uh, transform this variable so that instead of saying the zeros, the ones, uh, the twos, and the threes, it's going to list uh, you know, the, the actual value, you know, like high school, education, bachelor's degree, et cetera, right? Now, uh, if you start scrolling down this, uh, this uh, file here, you'll start to see that this is a very, very big uh, data set. Actually, let me go to the very bottom. There are you know, over 6,000 different uh, observations in here. So it's going to take you an extremely long time to manually edit each of these, right? The, the threes would have to change to PhDs, and the, and the ones that have to change those to high school or whatever, right? So that would take a very, very long time for you to do manually. So I'm going to show you a way to do that uh, a little bit easier using an, an embedded if function. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and let's create a new column here. Uh, so let's insert one column to the right, and let's title this column Education Level as well. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up deleting this first Education Level column once I've kind of transformed the variable. So I want this new column to state what the Education Level is in, in Word. So a 0 will become High School, a 1 will be Bachelor's Degree, etc. Right? And the way we can do this is by uh, using an embedded if function. Now by embedded if function, I mean that uh, one of the arguments of the if function is going to be another if function. So what, the way this is going to work is uh, I'm going to be checking first whether or not the education level is zero. And if that is true, it's going to say high school. And if it's not true, then I'm going, I'm going to ch uh, do another if function. Actually, I have this in, in the file here. Uh, if you, you want to, uh, this kind of um, diagram I think is kind of helpful, right? If the cell is, is equal to zero, we're going we're gonna to output high school, right? But if it's, uh, if it's false, if it's not equal to zero, uh, then we're going gonna to do a new if function. And the new if function will check whether or not it's equal to one. And if it's equal to one, then we're going to output bachelors. And if that's not true, then we're going to do another if function, which is going to be uh, checking if it's equal to two. And if that's true, we're going to output masters. If that's false, we'll check if it's equal to a three. And if that's the case, we'll output a PhD. And if that's false, then we are going to output nothing at all, OK? So uh, the, the initial if function, hopefully you remember, it's going to check the logical expression. That's the first thing we're checking here, wh You know what the value of the cell is. And then uh, if it's true, uh, we're going to output uh, some value. If it's false, then we're going to be you know, doing a separate if function to check the other numbers, OK? Uh, so the way this is going to look is we're going to start this with the if function by typing equal to and then if, and then the open parentheses. And then the, the first uh, argument here is the logical expression. We want to check whether or not this value uh, is equal to a 0. Now, obviously, in this case, this one is equal to a 0, but we're kind of we're gonna creating the function in general to, to work later for all the other, uh, all the other cells, because we're going to drag this formula. We're going to drag this formula down. Let me just actually uh, zoom in a little bit here. Uh, so equals if, and then I want to check if this value is equal to 0. Obviously, here it is equal to 0, but this is going to be a, a general check. It's going to do this check for every single cell, right? Now, if that is true, if this value is equal to, to 0, well, I said the 0 indicates that it is a uh, high school education. So we're just going to output high school. Right? And we have to include that in quotes because uh, it is not a number. Um, if it was a number, then I could just type in the number. But uh, the way this if function works is if you want to output something that is text, uh, you have to output that or you have to type that in with quotations. So if it's true, we're going to uh, do high school. But if it's false, 
Well, then it could either be a, uh, a one for a uh, bachelor's degree, it could be a two for a bachelor's degree, or it could be a three for a PhD. So I can't just type a single value in here for value with false, because it could be three other possible outcomes. So I have to do another if function to check you know, which of those three other outcomes it is. So if it's not high school, it's gonna be one of those other three outcomes and I need to check which one it's going to be. So I'm gonna do another if function here and this is gonna this is gonna start our embedded if, meaning that this if function is a, an if function within the original if function. And now we're gonna check not if it's equal to zero, but now if this value, the C2, is equal to a one, right? And if it's equal to one, then we're going to output that they have a bachelor's degree. So I'm just going to put a bachelor's like that. I'm going to do another comma to move to the value of false. Well, if it's false, then that, that means it wasn't it wasn't high school and now it's not bachelor's. So now I need to check whether or not it's uh, you know either a two or a three. So I'm going to check here another if function to see if this value is equal to a two. And if it's equal to two, then I'm going to put a, a master's degree. And if it's false, uh, then I have to check whether or not it's equal to a three. Now, a three is the only other option, so most likely it's going to be a three. So I could just say at this point, you know, if it's false, I could just type in uh, PhD. But in general, it's kind of a better practice to uh, to code the last one as well, uh, just in case there were some kind of mistakes in your data. Like this education level should either be zero, one, two, uh, one, two or three. So if it's not zero, one or two, I mean, it really should be the three being the PhD. But I'm going to put in the logic here, here to check that just to make sure. Uh, so I'm going to do another if function which is going to be whether or not C2, I've just arrowed over to C2, if that's equal to a 3. Uh, if that is the case, then I'm going to output a PhD. And if that is false, then that, that would be, basically we made a mistake here. Someone doesn't have an education level at all, right? Uh, and if that's the case, I'm just going to put in, uh, oops, uh, I'm going to put in double quotes where the double quotes are just going to represent nothing, right? There's nothing inside the quotes there. So that means if if it didn't meet one of those first uh, four conditions, zero, one, two, or three, if it's some other number or some other value, we're just going to output nothing, just a blank cell, right? And then we need to close parentheses a whole bunch of times because uh, we have a whole bunch of these if functions open. And if you look kind of up at the formula bar or here, you can kind of see what each parenthesis is relating to. So I've closed one of the parentheses. If I close another one, it's related to this one. I close another one, it's related to this one. I close another one, it's related to my very first if function, and then I should be good to go. So if I press enter, it is indeed going to output a zero for that very first person, which is correct, right? Uh, high school is the correct education level for the first person because zero relates to high school. It's kind of giving me a preview. If I was to autofill this for the other ones, uh, I would get uh, a bachelor's degree for these ones. And then if I scroll down, uh, I could see a PhD for the threes. And I got some twos that are masters. So it does appear that this would uh, be doing it correctly. So I can uh, accept the autofill and press the check mark box. And then that is going to you know, uh, continue that to all the other ones. If you did not do the checkbox there, uh, you missed it, uh, you accidentally you know, missed the checkbox there, then you can just click on this first cell. You can double click on the fill handle here, and that will copy the formula down to all the remaining cells. So there you go, that is using an embedded if function to save you a whole bunch of time. We have just you know, done 6,000 rows plus of data uh, and converted all of these numbers into the appropriate uh, kind of label related to this person's education, right? So now at this point, the education level, the first education level column is kind of uh, not needed, right? But if I was to just delete this column, let me show you what would happen if I deleted the column. It's actually going to give me errors here because these are now, uh, they were referencing values that now no longer exist, right? It was, it was referencing that column C, which has now been deleted. Uh, so now it has kind of this, uh, you know, error reference here, and I'm getting a, a reference error for each of these. The, what it was originally referencing has been deleted. Uh, so that's kind of a problem. So I'm going to undo that. Um, so there are a couple of uh, solutions to this. I, I guess one solution would be just, you know, don't even get rid of this uh, education column. Then you have two education level columns, and that's kind of annoying. Uh, maybe you just want to have one. Uh, another solution would be we could simply just hide this column. So if you uh, right click on this column and you hide, then we won't see that initial column, um, but it will still be there. You can see between B and D, there is still a column there. You can press the arrow here and you'll, you'll, you'll get it back, or you can uh, highlight between these and you can right click and unhide the columns and get it back. Uh, but what if we just want to delete it completely? And that is what I want to do here. I want to delete it completely. So deleting it completely the way it is gives us the reference error. So what we have to do is we have to basically get rid of the formula uh, reference that we have in, inside each cell. So notice the difference here. We have the, we have the cell itself, like uh, the, the actual text that the cell is displaying, uh, which is high school here. And then we have kind of like the back end version of the cell, which is the, uh, the formula, right? So if we can change the back end version of the, of the cell from the formula to simply high school or to simple, simply bachelor's, et cetera, 
that will fix our problem. We can then delete this, uh, this one because it'll no longer be referencing the original education level. So the way we can do this, and this is a, a very common and nice thing to be able to do in Google Sheets or Excel, is we can, we can do what is called copy and paste values. So let me just show you this for the very first cell. If I was to copy this cell, so I can either right click and copy, or if I do uh, control C, I can do that as well. And if I right click again, I'll have an option to paste special. And under the paste special, I ha I'll have a couple different options here. The one that I want to paste is the values only. So if I uh, uh, paste the values only, which the shortcut for that is control shift and V, You'll notice now that both the formula bar as well as the text uh, that's displaying in the cell are both high school, whereas the other ones are still have the, the long formula. But the very first one now now simply has high school. So now if I was to delete this column, uh, now that very first one no longer has the error, right? Uh, so I would like to do that for uh, for every single one here. Uh, so the way I can do this is I need to highlight all of the all of these cells. So the way you can highlight all of the cells here is you can click on uh, D2. You can hold down Control and Shift at the same time, or maybe on a Mac it might be Command and Shift. But I'm holding down both Control and Shift, and then press the down arrow. And that will get you to the end of the list, and that will highlight all of the values in the entire list. Now I can press uh, Control and C uh, to copy, or right click and copy. And now I've copied that entire column. Now I need to get back to the beginning of the list, and you know, scrolling up would take you a long time. Uh, you could uh, scroll up uh, using the bar on the far right hand side, which you can't see on my screen, but there's a bar on the right hand side. I could click, or an, uh, another option is if you click in any cell and you hold down just Control and press the uh, up arrow. So not Control and Shift, but just the Control and the up arrow. That will get you back to the beginning of the list without highlighting everything. And now I can uh, right click here and I can do the paste special and I can paste the values only. And now at this point we have, you know, uh, changed all of these from the formula type reference now just to the text. So at this point I am free to delete the original education level column and that will not give me any errors. Okay, so that is a way you can use your an, an embedded if function in order to uh, transform your data. So it can save you a lot of time to be able to do that rather than, you know, doing this, you know, manually, especially for, you know, hundreds or thousands of cells. You're definitely going to want to get a hold on uh, using the embedded if functions. Okay, now at this point I have uh, zoomed out and I'm uh, re-recording this part because I realized part of the screen was getting cut off. Uh, so the next thing we want to do here is we want to create a histogram based on our salary uh, column. So remember what a histogram is. A histogram is going to represent uh, on the horizontal axis we're going to have uh, bins or buckets or classes, a lot of different names for these, that will contain kind of uh, ranges of salaries. So there might be you know, one uh, bin for 0 to 10,000 and another for uh, 10 to 20,000, etc. Right. And within each of those, we're going to plot a bar that's going to represent how many individuals fall into each of those classes or buckets or bins. So in order to, to do this, in order to create the, the chart here, we can just uh, we can either simply just uh, highlight all of column F or we can click on the, the salary here. We can uh, hold down control shift and press the down arrow and that will get us to the bottom of the list. However, you want to do this, we can go ahead and insert and we can uh, insert a chart. And it's not always going to necessarily give you the best chart uh, from the beginning here. We may need to kind of uh, edit this chart a little bit uh, or you know, change the chart uh, type in order to make this uh, look a little bit nicer. So if we go over here to the side, we'll have uh, our chart editor menu and we can uh, change the chart type to uh, whatever chart we would like to have. So in this case, if we scroll all the way down, uh, you will see under other, we have an option for a histogram chart. And so that is the type of chart that I am going to use. Now, uh, right now, I, I'm looking at this, and, and this is uh, on, on the horizontal axis. These are the salaries, and each of these is uh, displaying, um, you know, b based on uh, each each of the bins, which we can't even really tell how much is in each bin. How you know how much? What's the range for each bar? It's kind of hard to tell, uh, but it's telling us how many individuals fall into each of those categories. So, kind of what I would like to do is I would like to increase the, um, or actually, yeah, I would like to increase the size. Of, uh, of each bin or class. So that's going to make me have less bars, but each bar is going to be more uh, more distinct. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go over here to Customize, and I'm going to go under uh, under Histogram, and I am going to change the bucket size, and I'm actually going to change this to uh, 20,000. Uh, you can experiment with different sizes here. So I could do 10,000 as well, and maybe that's OK. Kind of a little messy here on the horizontal axis. Or you could do, you know, 30,000. Uh, so kind of, you could try a few different ones here, but uh, the one that I kind of settled on is I like the, the 20,000 here. So now what this is doing is uh, it's telling us um, kind of the boundaries of each of these bars. So the, the first bar uh, here, it looks like no one was making between 0 and 20,000. So there's, a, there's not even a bar there that, uh, for the first uh, 
kind of class. But the second class is from 20 to 40,000. So it's telling us how many individuals made from 20 to 40,000. It looks like it was a little bit under uh, 500 people or from 40 to 60,000, etc. right? Uh, so we would like to um, maybe organize this a little bit more. You can kind of experiment with uh, all of the different uh, options over here for customize. But the, the one that I, the, kind of the main one that I want to uh, do here is just the chart axis and titles. So uh, maybe I want to make a, uh, a title for this thing. And uh, what was the title that I wanted uh, to use for this? Okay, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna title this salary histogram. And you'll see that that's gonna show up here when I press enter. Uh, maybe I wanna center that. I can go over here and I can uh, I'll go to alignment and I can center that. Um, and I, I could do other things to it if I wanted to, change the, the size uh, or whatever, but I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead uh, to the chart title here and change this to horizontal title axis. So my horizontal title axis, uh, that's gonna be uh, my uh, salary in dollars is what that is representing there. And then maybe I want a vertical axis here, which is just counting. Uh, so we might call that, um, we might call that for a vertical axis, the frequency, right? So we have, uh, you know, from 20 to 40,000, that, that salary in dollars, we have the frequency, how many individuals fell into that class? Well, just under uh, 500 individuals. You can mess uh, around with uh, other options here if you'd like to, I think in series, um, there might be a way to, to get data labels on here. I know we can for the bar graph, but I'm not sure about the, the histogram here. You could actually get labels so it could tell you the number for each of these. Uh, but we're not going to worry too much uh, about that now. Uh, this is good enough for our you know general histogram that we have here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, click on the triple dots here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this to its own sheet. And here we have it uh, looking a little bit nicer on its own sheet. So here down here, you can see it's uh, created its own sheet here. And maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna title this uh, salary histogram. And there you go. I've created my uh, you know my first chart here. Uh, so let's go back to income and let's go ahead and make another chart here. So let's make a bar chart now based on the race column. So now I'm at the bottom of the list. I can either scroll up or I can hold down Control and uh, the up arrow to get back to the beginning of the list here. And I'm gonna make one based on race. So I'm just gonna highlight the whole race column and I'm gonna insert a uh, let's see here a chart. And right here, it's gonna like not even give me a chart here because uh, it doesn't really know what to do with this uh, this data. Uh, if you press aggregate, then it's basically gonna consider the sums of these. So it's gonna sum up. It's gonna say how many white uh, individuals do I have, or how many Australians, how many uh, whatever for each of those, right? And it's gonna count all those up. It looks like I, I lost the edit chart here. So I've done the aggregate, but it's also actually considering race to be an option here. So race was actually my column my column title. Uh, so I don't really want that one to be a uh, an option. So I want to use uh, row one as a header, and that's going to tell it, oh, race, don't include race as one of the categories here. Because uh, if, if I don't have this, it's considering race a category, but that really was just the title. I don't really want that. So row one, I'm going to consider that to be the header. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and uh, let's make a few changes to this. So let's go to customize again, and let's uh, go to the, um, not horizontal, access chart and uh, access titles. Let's change the chart title. Uh, let's see, what did I have this one as? Uh, bar graph of race. And let's maybe uh, center that one again. And then uh, let's go to the, uh, let's change the chart title to the horizontal title. Let's change the horizontal to just race. Uh, so we get that there. And then let's change the vertical title to uh, frequency. And this one I am going to add the data labels to. So I think that's a little bit nicer to do here. So I think it's under series. Yes, under series. If you do the uh, the data labels, then you can get see get, see the numbers a little bit more clear. Looks like uh, we had uh, the majority or the, the highest uh, proportion uh, were whites and Asians were the second highest proportion, and then all the rest were uh, kind of relatively uh, just about as common as each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, move this chart uh, to its own sheet again, and let's title this one. Let's see what did I title this one? Uh, race uh, race bar graph. And let's go ahead and create one more. So let's go back to income and let's create a scatter diagram based on, uh, let's see, what did we do it based on? Uh, the experience and the salary. So I'm gonna, I can either highlight these two. Uh, something I should mention here that could be uh, useful sometimes if you wanna highlight non-adjacent ranges. So let's say I wanted to highlight A and E at the same time. I could uh, click on A and then hold down control and then click on E and that's gonna highlight e, uh, both of those because uh, otherwise, uh, if you hold down shift, it's going to do everything between them. But if you hold down control, it's going to uh, just do those two. Sometimes, so sometimes that might be useful to do. But here, I want to do just these two, so I can just highlight these two, which are right next to each other. And I can go ahead and insert. 
Um, no, I should note it, note here. Uh, if I just highlight the columns here, it is actually um, it is actually highlighting the entire column, so it's actually highlighting blanks. But Google Sheets is uh, smart enough to know to not include the blanks. Uh, if you wanted to get a around that, like if you had uh, text, you know, even below that, uh, you may need to just highlight these two, and then hold down Control Shift Down Arrow, and then you would not uh, do the whole list. But here, it's not really it doesn't really matter since um, we don't have anything below that, so we can just uh, highlight those two. We can go to Insert. We can insert a chart, and we want to do a uh, scatter diagram here. We're going to do a scatter diagram for these. So we'll let, let's go ahead and change this uh, column chart to if we scroll down to what they call a scatter chart, and that's going to look uh, something like this. Uh, so let's make a couple of uh, changes to this one. So let's uh, customize the, let's see, chart and axis titles. Uh, so let's change the chart title. Let's change this to experience uh, versus salary scatter plot. Uh, let's change the uh, horizontal axis. Let's change that to years of experience. And let's change the vertical axis to uh, salary in dollars, All right? So uh, we can see here there looks like there's a positive correlation as we go uh, to the right. If someone has more experience, they tend to have more a higher salary, so that we do see somewhat of a positive, uh, a moderate to strong positive correlation. We could kind of fit a uh, a straight line or a, an upward sloping line to this, and in fact, actually, uh, this will let us do that line. Uh, I think we do series here and we do trend line, it's going to give us, it's not uh, very dark there, but you can kind of see it in the background, it's giving us the trend line, which is the least squares uh, regression line. Let me also go ahead and, uh, and center this because it's kind of bothering me, so I'm going to center my, my title. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this or move this to its own sheet here, and uh, let's title this sheet, uh, let's see, what did I title this one? Uh, experience versus or uh, slash salary uh, scatter. All right, uh, so let's go back in here, and uh, now we uh, are ready to uh, kind of run regression is what we're going to do. So we, we kind of did this. Uh, let's see if we can find actually the equation to this line um, and also some other information like the correlation coefficient to really tell us exactly how strong this correlation is and the coefficient of determination as well. Uh, so let's go over here into uh, J2, and let's type in a couple of things here. So we're going to have experience versus salary. Uh, let me uh, kind of scroll over here so this is a little nicer. Uh, experience versus salary, uh, and then we have the, the y-intercept we're going to want to find. That's going to be our a value, uh, the slope, uh, th which is the b value, the correlation, which is r, and the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. So when I say uh, y-intercept and slope here, uh, I'm referring to, let, let me go back here in, in kind of my written instructions. Um, this is the equation that we use for a line in regression. We use y hat equals a plus bx. So we're going to try to find uh, the y-intercept a. We're going to try to find the, the slope b. And we're also going to find the correlation coefficient, which is r, and the coefficient of determination, which is uh, r squared. Uh, so let's go back in here. Um, let's, um, let's merge and center this across uh, j through k here. So if I go merge and center, and then I'm going to uh, horizontal align. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create borders around this now. I think if you're following my written instructions, I might not do this till later, but I'm just going to add some borders here because I like the way that that looks. I'm also going to increase the size of that uh, column by double clicking. Okay, so to create uh, to find the y-intercept, we can uh, we can use the y-intercept uh, function. So it's just called intercept. So if you do equal to intercept and open parentheses, uh, this function takes in two arguments: the data y and the data x. Uh, the data y, our y, uh, our y uh, variable is going to be our, our salary here. So click on the first salary number, which is 28,000. Hold down Control and Shift and press the down arrow to get to the bottom of the list. Press a comma and you'll be on the data for x. The data for x is this, uh, this column right here. So you can either click the 32 here. You can go all the way back to the top if you want to, but I'm going to click the 32 right here. I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and the up arrow. Uh, but that actually got me too much. I don't want the years of experience there. So if I hold down sh shift and press down, uh, that'll be back there. Uh, maybe that was uh, more complicated than uh, some people could follow. Uh, so if you, if you don't want to do that, because uh, scrolling up from the bottom actually uh, does too much, if you don't like that, um, then another way would be to uh, scroll up to the top and then hold down uh, or click on the, the very first one, hold down control, shift, and down arrow, and that will get you to the bottom. 
uh, press enter and that will have uh, calculated the y-intercept which turns out to be about 58,034.39. So basically that means that our model, if the person has zero years of experience, this model is going to predict that their income is 58,000, right? Um, because the equation of the line is uh, y hat equals a plus bx. If they have zero years of experience, then the, the x would be zero and we'd be left with just the a. Uh, so, and the a is what we just found. So if they have zero years of experience, this is what it's going to predict their salary to be, right? Now let's do uh, something similar here for uh, the slope. Um, you may have noticed it did give us a, uh, an option to kind of uh, copy the formula down, but we didn't want to do that because we don't want the y-intercept in every single one of these. We want to change uh, to do the slope here. So we're going to do equal to slope. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to click on the very first one. I'm going to uh, control shift, uh, go down to the bottom, uh, comma. I'm going to uh, click on this one over here. Or Actually, I can just do the, I, I think I have a shortcut here is if I just press the left arrow, uh, yes, if I do the left arrow, uh, I can see I'm on J4, uh, which is not the right cell, but I can uh, arrow over here, and then uh, I'm kind of did a couple of things at once there. Uh, that got me to the, the, the top of the list, and now I can arrow over to the first one. I'm just kind of showing you different ways you can go about doing this. Uh, so the last one, I just I, I kind of I scrolled up and then highlighted, but here, if you just do the arrow keys, you can kind of arrow over to it. Uh, so Control, Shift, and down here, arrow over the years of experience close parentheses, and I've got my slope. So this tells me for every additional uh, one year of experience, the model is going to predict their salary is about $7,095 higher. Let's get the correlation as well. So core L. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna do the arrow keys. I like the arrow keys instead of clicking. You, know, you can click on it if you want to, but I'm going to use the arrow keys to arrow over here. And then I'm going to control shift down arrow. I'm going to do comma to move to the data X. I'm going to do the arrow keys again to scroll over here. And then I'm going to control shift down arrow again. I'm going to close the parentheses and get my correlation. So this uh, 0.81 uh, correlation, that's a, a pretty high number. Remember, correlations between negative 1 and 1. So uh, 0.81 is a pretty high one. We would say there's a, a pretty strong positive correlation between uh, someone's years of experience and their salary, which makes a lot of sense, right? The more experience that they have, uh, the higher you'd expect the salary to be. And then let's get the coefficient of uh, determination, which is r squared. A couple ways we could do this. We could literally just take this value, up arrow to this value. Um, um, so if I uh, either up arrowed or I just clicked on this value, uh, I could take that and I could square it. I could do the caret uh, shift 6 and then 2, and that would find me r squared. Uh, or we could use the r squared function. Either way is going to work, r, r, rsq, and then do the same thing over here. Uh, control shift down arrow, comma, arrow over again. Control shift down arrow, and that's going to give me the same thing either way. Uh, this number is typically expressed as a percent, so this would be about 65.78 percent or so. Uh, let me actually kind of round these. Uh, let's um, let me round these two to four decimals. So if I go over here, uh, let's decrease the decimal places. Uh, and same thing here, but let's do these to two decimals. Uh, so this is saying 65.78 uh, percent of the variation in the salary, which is our y variable can be explained by our x variable, which is years of experience. So let me say that one more time, because this is a little bit, sometimes can go over people's head, the coefficient of determination, r squared. It's saying there is a lot of variation in the salary numbers, right? If we kind of scroll down here, the, the salary numbers, there's a lot of variation here. Well, 65.78% of that variation, or like 65.78% of the reason why the salary is changing, or the, the differences in the, in the salary, can be explained by the years of experience. Meaning there are other variables that could account for the other about 35%. So if we, there may be other variables we could include in a model uh, if you had like a multiple regression model with uh, multiple x variables that could, uh, you know, make up the, the slack there for the additional 35%. But uh, basically, you know, uh, years of experience alone goes, you know, 65.78% of the, the way to explaining or predicting, I guess you could say, uh, the variation in our, in our salaries. Okay, uh, now that we've had we have that, let's uh, let's do a little bit more here. So let's go ahead and uh, create another a couple more columns here. So I'm going to create another column to the right of the uh, res or let's see here uh, the right of the salary. So the salary right here. I'm going to insert uh, two columns to the right. And the first column I'm going to title this uh, predicted salary. And the second one I am going to title uh, residual. Uh, let's increase that there and let's uh, scroll a little bit to the right here. Um, yeah, this is uh, probably where I want to be, and uh, maybe I could uh, I could uh, kind of decrease this here so that uh, it's, it's kind of closer. There we go. 
Okay, so I want to I wanna do the predicted salary. So I, I know the actual salary of this person. The actual salary of this person is 28000 uh, But I can kind of go back and back test my model and say, you know, what would my model have predicted this person's salary uh, to be? Uh, hint here, it's going to be the y-intercept because they had zero years of, of experience. Uh, but for other people, it's, it's going to be something different, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and do the predicted salary. Let's do a, a formula here. Uh, so, so once again, let me just remind you... Um, we are doing uh, we are doing this type of formula. So uh, we're trying to uh, take the y-intercept and add uh, b, which is our slope, times uh, whatever the x value is, where the x value is going to be the years of experience. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing here. It's going to be equal to uh, the y-intercept uh, plus uh, whatever the uh, the slope is, which is seven thousand ninety five point four six multiplied by uh, by the by the the value of the years of experience, which is uh, zero in this case, right? And that's going to give me fifty eight thousand uh, thirty four point three nine, and that is correct for the very first person. And notice here, uh, Google Sheets is trying to autofill, and obviously something is clearly going wrong with the autofill here because these other numbers is giving me zero for almost every single one here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to press check mark, uh, box here to see what the heck went wrong here, right? What, what was going on, right? So uh, I, w if I go here, let me maybe go down to like a further one here. If I double click on this cell, you can see what's doing. It's, it's still referencing the years of experience here, but it's not still referencing the y-intercept and the slope. It is, it's dragged those down. It's not doing that correctly, right? So hopefully you're remembering this here. Uh, we have made a mistake in terms of uh, differentiating between uh, absolute and relative references. So uh, the years of experience uh, should be a, an a, sorry, a relative reference, meaning it should change with every cell. And it is indeed changing for every cell. So the years of experience is, is working properly. What the problem is, is the y-intercept and slope should be absolute references. They should not be changing as we drag the formula down. So you might remember the way to do this. First of all, I'm going to delete all of this by holding down Control, Shift, and Down Arrow um, over the second cell here, I guess uh, uh, cell G3. And then I'm going to just press delete to get rid of those. I'm going to press control up arrow to get back to the top. And I'm going to go ahead and modify this. So I want uh, I want the M3 and the M4. I want those to both to be absolute references. So the way to do that is to go right after M3 and press F4 and go right after M4 and press F4. And that's going to put the dollar signs around the cell to indicate that it's going to be an absolute reference. And now if I press enter, and I can accept the autofill, or if I don't accept the autofill, I can click on the first cell, and then I can double click on the fill handle, and that's going to give me uh, the predicted salary. Now, for the first several people here, the predicted salary is going to be exactly the same because it's only based on the years of experience, and they all have the exact same years of experience. But as I scroll down, as the years of experience changes, it looks like it's maybe uh, sorted by years of experience here. Uh, you're going to see that the numbers are going to start to get bigger. If I went way down, you can see uh, they definitely are changing for everyone, right? It looks like we guess we have some more zeros uh, later in the data set. Okay, and then we would like to also calculate the residual. The residual is basically saying how far is your prediction off by? So, for example, this very first person we predicted, based on zero years of experience, this model predicts their salary to be about $58,000, right? But that's actually a much over prediction. This person actually only has $28,000 in salary. So this, this model over predicted the salary for the very first person. Uh, how much did it over predicted by? Well, it looks like about $30,000. So the way we can calculate the residual here is we can say, okay, the residual is take the actual value. The actual value here, the Y value is what we would call this. The Y value, the actual salary amount is $28,000. So I'm going to use uh, F2 there and I'm going to subtract and I'm going to arrow over to uh, the predicted salary. And if I press enter here, uh, that's going to give me uh, the value here. And I can accept the autofill here because this is going to be correct. I did not need any absolute references. I want both of those to drag down. So those should be uh, relative references. And this uh, does uh, appear to be uh, to be correct. Uh, it looks like for a lot of the early people here, uh, we are over predicting their salary, right? So uh, this person here, their actual salary was 28000 the predicted salary was 58000 so that's a negative 30000 residual. Negative residuals are going to represent over-prediction. So we actually over-predicted by $30,000, $34. Or let's find some positive residuals. We might have to scroll down a little bit to find some of those because it looks like a lot of the early ones were not. Uh, all of these people, looks like a lot of them were, were getting the, they had the same experience and the same salary. A couple people did, right? So this person, um, we predicted their salary to be 79320 when their actual salary was uh, 80000 
so we actually underpredicted this person by 700 or 679. So the positive residuals are going to represent underpredictions. We predicted something smaller than their actual uh, salary. Okay, I think that is uh, just about everything I wanted to do here. Uh, I think the only thing left to do would be to just kind of clean this up a little bit. Uh, so let's um, first of all let, let's let's insert a filter here. I always like to have filters on my data tables, actually under data. So let's create a filter, and uh, let's uh, highlight these uh, these cells, uh, actually uh, the whole thing here. So from A, and then I'm going to hold down Shift and press on J, and then I'm going to double click between them because some of them are getting cut off. So I'm going to double click here, and that's going to increase the size uh, as appropriate. And now I can sort this however I want to. So I can sort by residual. And I can see if I sort Z to A here, then it's going to show me uh, this is the, the highest residual. This is the, the most underpredicted value, which was uh, 79,000 compared to 180,000. So the model predicted this, this person only has three years of experience. They're making 180,000. So, right, uh, the model much uh, underpredicted their salary. I guess they have like, they're a data scientist so they're, and they have a master's degree. So they're, you know, getting way more. Uh, are they, let, let me see uh, how close we get to a zero residual. Do we ever get to zero? No, it looks like the closest we get is like negative 700. Uh, oh, actually, right here. Ooh, we had some that were very close. So these are, uh, they're positive, so they're under predictions by about, you know, $9. So these are $9, $10. So some of them were pretty darn close. So you can experiment with, it, you know, you know um, sorting this in different ways if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and just sort this by age. So we have uh, the youngest age to the oldest age. I'm also going to create a border around this thing. So if I hold down control, uh, click on A1, hold control, shift, right arrow, Control shift, uh, hold, still hold down uh, control shift, and now the down arrow. I'm at the, bo uh, the bottom of the list, and now I've uh, highlighted the whole table. Another way to do this would be to click on the very first value, and then uh, you could scroll all the way to the bottom, and then you could click on uh, the last value while holding shift, and that would do the same thing. And then uh, we want to add the borders here, so we can go ahead and add uh, all borders there. And uh, if I want to, I could also center all these. They look a little nicer maybe if they're centered. And then I have a nice looking uh, data table going on here. All right, I think that is just about everything I wanted to cover uh, in this video. So hopefully you found it helpful.